Here we are right now in the luxurious studios of WRAF, where we're about to meet and go on a search for the next great American band. But we already know who they are. They're the Mugs. They had a great time. Where was that? In Los Angeles? Yes. Hollywood. Yes. In Hollywood. But they're here back in Detroit. They're on the Take the Money and Run tour, and we're going to find out all about that, new music, and everything else that goes on with the Mugs, especially the big show tomorrow night. So hang with us. Don't go anywhere. This is Riff Video, and it's just about to happen live on the air. WRIF The Riff. We're live at high noon with the mugs today. And uh, welcome, guys, to the studio. Uh, hey, it's good having to us. have you here. You know, we uh, we did this, what, just about a year ago, if I'm not mistaken. I think you guys came in at the time. And, um, and, and then right after that, you know, it wasn't too long after that we had heard that uh, you were heading out to Hollywood for the uh, next Great American Band search. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'll tell you... Uh, We've done our own contest here, Battle of the Bands, you know, the uh, the Rock Girl Search. And uh, just personally, I was involved here recently with my daughter being in a big competition with WDIV. And that is excruciating. I mean, that really takes a lot out of you. What was it like being in that competition and then, you know, not only having to perform, but watch all the other bands and see the results of what was going on? What was that like? Um, for me, uh, uh, being Danny, uh, I, yeah, I, Danny. I really, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy. I, you know, I watch so much TV, and uh, I, you know, enjoy certain reality show. You know, so I just walked around with a complete smile on my face. I, you know, we were we were pretty low key, just seeing how everything went down. I mean, when it came to the performance, you did you did get pretty nervous, but uh, you know, I just couldn't help but marvel. Like, wow, we're on a reality TV show. I yes, can't believe were. this. Just looking around and laughing, like, wow, can you believe this is us? Little old goofy uh, band from Detroit doing this thing. You know? <laughs> now, how did how did you guys end up finding your way? You know, through that, did, did you sign up for a competition? Did somebody come after you guys? Uh, a, a good friend and fan of ours, Britannia, uh, mentioned that we should uh, uh, get the forms and send it in. So we we did just that and. We I couldn't even find the forms, so she uh, printed them out for us. Okay. And uh, we uh, they called us back, and like a month, they actually called us back, and they said you're being considered for it, and don't tell anyone, but um, you're in consideration to come out and audition. And uh, the first place was Burbank, California. Oh, okay. And then the second place was. Uh, uh, Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. So they ran you through the ringer a little bit before you actually got on the show. Yeah. yeah. That was a first. Uh, it was a first audition. Yeah, in Burbank, California, and that was the one they filmed it, but they never like they never showed it on TV. Okay. But there was 200 bands that had to do that. Just, oh. you, you had to pass that audition just to make it. Into now, the did you Vegas bump audition. into any other Detroit bands while you were there? Yeah, yeah. one. Uh, the singles. Yeah, actually came out and uh, and gave it a go. And we, you know, actually we met like 20 bands that we became good friends with through the week who didn't make it past the, the Burbank audition. You know, we never thought we'd make it past the Burbank audition, but, you know, made some good friends, of, you know, initially in the three days we were there. The first thing I thought was Detroit. That makes absolute sense to be, you know, if you're looking for a rock band, you might want to come here and try that. So, you know, having you guys out there, uh, you know, really made all of us proud, obviously, but it made sense to us that you were in it. And then, of course, you got into the competition. But then it got pretty nuts. I mean, there were some weird groups in there, okay? One that really caught Mike Clark's eye. <laughs> <laughs> Fifi? <laughs> Fifi LaRue. <laughs> A rock and roll! What was the name of that band again? Fifi LaRue. Oh, that was what it was called, huh? Yeah. <laughs> they call him Feces LaRue. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and, and beat him up pretty badly on the phone. I'm glad they didn't call you to start doing that stuff. <laughs> but... Uh, what what were what was it like just sitting there watching some of those other bands uh, perform? Did was your heart coming out of your chest and going, oh God, look at these guys are doing great, or hey, we got a chance at this? You know, uh, I particularly thought we had a decent chance. You know, in so far as uh, um, we were just representing the rock and roll contingent of this show, and you know, basically came down to you know what genre was going to become most popular, mm -hmm. as opposed to what mm -hmm. band was going to be, you know to come across as uh, most popular, you know, and, you know, rock and, 
our type of bluesy rock and roll is kind of a fringy thing. But, uh, you know, just to make the show was an you know, absolute surprise and an honor. But, uh, you know, uh, we just went out and did our thing. You know, I was, we were pretty comfortable with what, it. What were the rules and regulations about all that don't tell now? You know, you're going to be on. You probably knew well before we did who had won the competition and all that, right? So No, no we didn't. It was no, week, really? It was week to week, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. It, was, it was absolutely week to week. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, that when they started uh, showing the show on the air that it was all uh, predetermined. But, yeah, we, it went actually week to week. We didn't know... Uh, for which week we were going Good. to be voted off or whatnot. So that was the, the tough part, waiting to see if you're going to get voted off that next week. Oh, my God. It was tense in that green. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Part. Yeah, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Those votes were sabotaged, though. <laughs> I still think they, they were. Is that right? <laughs> uh, not, maybe not for us, but I think To fit the, the uh, TV show, yeah. so to speak. Mm-hmm. Who, who did end up winning? Because I think after you guys left the show, we all stopped watching. I hate to say it. <laughs> well, the Clark brothers ended up winning. The Clark brothers? Yeah. You're they kidding were fantastic. me. fantastic, yeah. You know, uh, really great musicians. And, you know, we, we got along really well with all the bands. We had a we had a blast of a time with everybody, you know, because all we had was each other out in mm-hmm, out yeah. in California, you know. No one else knew anybody else, like in Hollywood. From our perspective, it was like uh, us twelve bands against the world. You know? Now, were they putting you up out there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Real eh? nice. Uh, real nice Everything. apartment. So you had yourself like a mansion on the water. Uh, no. No. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. It was, it was, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <there's, laughs> The accommodations were beautiful, though. They took really good care of us. Were, you, were all the bands together in, like, one big area, or mm-hmm. were you in, yes? Yeah, okay. we all in just uh, like a big hotel old apartments. Complex yeah. yeah, apartment complex. Wow, that is just too cool. So you, what happened from there? What, what good things now have come out of that for you? You said you met some bands. Have you hooked up to do any, you know, touring with some of the bands that you met? Have you met any producers that called you after that? Did Playboy call? I mean, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> well, you know, uh, we're, we're still kind of waiting to see, uh, see what the word is. Where, you know, the, uh, the show is actually technically waiting to see which bands they want to pick up for the label or, you know, as far as uh, which bands are going to keep. We have, a, you know, another month and a half to they're going to make their final decisions. Oh, okay. So uh, in the meantime, we're just kind of uh, waiting around to see what's, uh, to see what's going to happen. Yeah. So back home and playing a lot of shows. Exactly. That's what you're doing. You decided to get back on the, on the stick, eh, and start rocking in Detroit. And um, I saw that, uh, well, you have a big show tomorrow, which is one of the reasons why you're here, right? Mm-hmm. The Emerald Theater. Yeah, really excited about that show. It's a great lineup, great bill. Uh, Class 3 Overbite is going on at 8 o'clock. They're a fantastic band. Uh, two of the best songwriters in Detroit, Brad Jenza and Mike Elgert. Oh, okay, sure. Jenza's, Jenza's got another new band. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, Blue Song, the reemergence of a, a great uh, bluesy rock band called Blue Song is going on at 9 o'clock. And we're going on at 10 o'clock. And uh, it's, a, it's a lineup that we're really, really excited about. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, we, uh, we heard about the show and mm-hmm. definitely wanted to have you come in and, and talk about your experience, but also about the music because you have to be right now one of the outstanding high energy uh, blues bands out of Detroit. And I, I guess you, your music is blues based, at least from the last album and the stuff that I've seen live. But what's going on with new material now? And plus, I saw that you're doing a, kind of a side project as well. So I want to, and that's very blues oriented. Mm-hmm. Peter Green was one of my favorites from the very early, early days of my radio career with Fleetwood Mac. But um, tell oh. me a little bit about that project. Um, that band's called the Rattlesnake Shake. We just played uh, nice. this week. <laughs> what a yeah. great song that is, too. Oh, it's wonderful, and we uh, <laughs> we give it the full twenty minute uh, Boston Tea Party version treatment of uh, of that tune. Really? Like, it's uh, one of the biggest big influences of uh, me as a songwriter and the Mugs in general is that British bluesy. Oh, rock. okay, you know, sure. Of course, of that's course. on Led Zeppelin. You know, free bands like that, Savoy Brown and. And uh, Peter Green is such a huge influence on me as a guitar player and whatnot. It's it's the guiltiest pleasure I can possibly have is to go out and do just all Peter Green Fleetwood Mac tunes for <laughs> night. You know, Tony can you know speak for that. And as you well. were just telling me that you guys are going to play that Tony at the Cadu Cafe. Is that right? Uh, oh, we, d- we just did last Saturday. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're looking at what a know, great place. Uh, they still have the feather bowling. And oh, sure. The do. muscles and yeah. everything is the same. And yeah. Oh, and, for God's sake! Because I used to live right there in that area. And, 
that was always a, a, a destination place on the weekend, you know. Oh, it's still Yeah, they is. tore down the waitress station, and they actually built a stage now, so it's... Well, yeah, because you guys are so big now. Yeah. <laughs> Just for us, I you know. Wish. You have to be the biggest band <laughs> playing there. No question about that. Well, let's listen to a track from this... Uh, Fine. This is the debut album mm -hmm. for you guys, right? But yep. a new one coming, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But uh, this is one we always play around here, and especially on Motor City Riffs. And at lunchtime, it's called Rollin' the B-Side Blues. It's the Mugs, and it's right here on Detroit's rock station, The Riff. <laughs> 